Hi everyone, me Robert here and in this YouTube series you'll learn how to build a full stack NFT marketplace with or without Lizzie Minting. If you have not seen the live demo in the first video yet, then please do so now before continuing with this video. AIP 712 is an Ethereum improvement proposal for hashing and signing type structured data that allows us to lazy mint NFTs. This means that NFT tokens are not minted on the blockchain until they get purchased. Therefore, the gas fees for minting the NFTs on the blockchain are not paid by the NFT creator or seller, but by the buyer. Implementing lazy minting with AIP 712 covers many modules in our marketplace. The service layer, the Ethereum connection layer, the marketplace smart contract itself, and also the front-end components. We will define the structure of the lazy minted NFTs and we also will implement a domain separator to protect us from replay attacks with different chain IDs. And then we write code that enables the NFT creators and sellers to sign their sales orders. We also write a marketplace smart contract that verifies and recovers the signatures of these lazy minted sales orders. Our marketplace smart contract will also perform several security checks before it actually mints the NFT tokens on the blockchain or transfers them to the buyer. Eventually, we will invalidate the lazy minted sales orders directly on the blockchain once they were used. Before we get started, please click the like button, the subscribe button and the notification bell below. Now let's get to it! All right, we will start with building the lazy minted sales order in the service ARP 712 module. And then we will sign this lazy minted sales order in the interface marketplace module. We open the service ARP 712.js file that we've created in the fourth episode. And here we write the function build sales order, const build sales order, which is an async function. And we will return the domain, the types, and the sales order. The domain will hold the information that this lazy minted sales order was created on our marketplace along with the chain on which it was created. The types variable will hold the types of the fields in our lazy minted sales order. And the sales order variable will actually hold the content of the lazy minted sales order. In order to be able to build this information, we expect to receive these arguments. The marketplace address, which is the address of our marketplace smart contract. The NFT item object, which contains all fields that the user has entered in the front end. The token owner, which is the address of the owner of this NFT token. If this NFT token is not minted on the blockchain yet, then this is the address of the creator of this new NFT token. The chain ID, which is the ID of the chain on which the user wants to create this lazy minted sales order. And finally, a nonce that we use to create this specific sales order. Now we can build a domain as follows. It contains the name and the version of your marketplace. I've named it lazy marketplace here, but of course you can name this any way you like. The verifying contract is the address of our marketplace smart contract. And here we add the chain ID. Next, we define the types of the fields of our sales orders. Here we need to define the structure of the sales order, which is a JSON array. I decided to prefix this structure field with struct. You can name this any way you like, but you have to make sure that you define it the same way on the smart contract, on the marketplace smart contract. Our lazy minting sales order contains these fields. The contract address is the address of the NFT contract, respectively of the NFT collection, and it is of type address. The token ID is the ID of the NFT token and it is of type uint256. The token owner is of type address. 
The field price is the sales price of this token and it is of type UINT256. The field token URI contains the link to the metadata of this NFT token and it is of type string. And finally, we add a nonce here, which is of type UINT256 as well. Now that we've created the structure of this sales order, we can also define the content. The content of this sales order we create with the variables that our function received as parameters. And here we return this three object as already mentioned in the beginning. Now we open the interface marketplace module that we've created in the third episode. Here we import the artifacts and modules that we previously created. The marketplace.json file which contains the ABI for our marketplace contract. The service ARP712 module that we've just created. And the service marketplace module, the interface Ethereum module and the interface NFT module that we've created in the last videos. And here we write the function create sales order, which will finally create the lazy minted sales order and prompt the user to sign it. We write const create sales order. As argument, we pass the NFT item here, which we get from the front end. If it was not created on our marketplace, then it has not the required permission roles in place. In this case, we explicitly have to request approval from the token owner to sell his uh, NFT tokens on our marketplace. We do this by calling this interface NFT function that we've created in the last video. Then we need to get the relevant information to create and sign the lazy minted sales order. The relevant information that we get here is the chain ID, the signer object, and the signer address, which will become the owner of the token. We get all these informations by calling the interface ethereum.initContract function that we created in the third video. In order to be able to interact with the marketplace smart contract, we have to pass the marketplace address and the ABI of the marketplace smart contract here. This function also returns us the marketplace contract itself. We interact with this marketplace contract to get the current sales order nonce as follows. Now we have all the information available to actually build the lazy minted sales order. We do this by calling the service ARP712 module with the build sales order function that we previously created and we pass these arguments that we've just received and this function returns us the domain, the types of the sales order and the sales order content itself. Now we can request the signer to sign this type data consisting of the domain, the types of the sales order fields and the sales order. Once the signer has signed this type data, we receive his signature and we add the signature to the sales order as follows. And finally, we return the sales order object which now contains the content of the sales order along with the signature of the signer. The function get current sales order nonce we implement in the marketplace.sol smart contract as follows. For now, we will just return a sales order nonce per owner address, which we will increment later. For this purpose, we use a simple address counter mapping but you also could generate a more sophisticated nose in the backend API. 
in order to check this out on the front end, we have to make the create sales order function an async function. We open the create and sell.js component in the components directory that we created in the second video. And here, if the user has chosen AIP 712 as order type in the formula, then we call the interface marketplace.create sales order function and we pass the NFT item from the formula. This function returns the sales order which contains the signature of the signer now. And here we store the sales order in the data object so that it also gets stored in the database through our service API create NFT in database that we've created in the fifth video. Now we can open our front end and create a lazy minting sales order for a new NFT. We choose AIP 712 here and click on the create and sell button. This opens the MetaMask browser with a signature request. And here we can see the domain name that we defined in the service ERP712.js module. And here we can see all the fields that we've defined in the type structure sales order. The user can now click on the sign button to create this lazy minted sales order. And now this lazy minted NFT is stored in the database along with the signature of the signer. In order to be able to sell this NFT through its sales order, we have to define the same structure of the sales order which we designed in the service ERP 712 module, also in the marketplace smart contract. Therefore, we open this marketplace.sol smart contract again and we define the structure of the sales order here as follows. Now we can write this function buy from sales order in the marketplace smart contract, which will be called from the front end whenever a user wants to purchase an NFT from a lazy minted sales order. This function has the following parameters the two address to which this NFT shall be minted. If the NFT token is minted yet, then this is the address to which the token shall be transferred. The contract address is the address of the NFT contract, respectively the address of the NFT collection, E of the NFT token, and finally the sales order data along with its structure. We define this function as public callable. And with the payable keyword, we enable the function to receive the ether value of the price defined in the sales order. Before we allow a user to buy this NFT token and to meet it to the blockchain, we have to do a few checks. First, we have to verify the signature with which the sales order was signed. We do this through an internal function underscore verify signature. We implement this function as follows. First, we call another internal function, which returns the hash of our fully encoded ARP 712 message. This function we don't have to write ourselves, since we can use it from the ARP 712 library from Open Zeppelin. In order to be able to call this function in our smart contract, we have to import the draft ARP 712.sol file from Open Zeppelin. And now we can derive our marketplace contract from the AIP 712 contract from Open Zeppelin. In order to be able to use this AIP 712 contract for our purpose, we have to call the AIP 712 constructor with our domain name and version, which defined in the service AIP 712 module. In our verify signature function, we now also can recover the address of the signer like so. And then we return the hash in the digest variable and the recovered address like so. Back in our buy from sales order function, 
we now have the digest and the recovered signer address available and we can be sure that the signature is valid. Now we also check if the buyer has provided enough Ethereum to purchase this NFT. We do this with this require statement. This checks the provided message value against the price defined in the lazy minted sales order. And here we check if the recovered address is the same address as the token owner in the sales order. In order to perform further actions, we first have to check if the token is minted on the blockchain yet or not. For this purpose, we implement another internal function is minted. And we implement the function is minted like so. Here we call the owner of function with the corresponding token ID in the corresponding NFT contract. Since the NFT contracts are external contracts to our marketplace smart contract, we can wrap this statement in a try catch block. If the token is minted yet, then we return true, otherwise we return false. But in order to be able to call this IERC721 interface with our NFT addresses, we first have to import the ERC721.sol file from OpenZeppelin like so. And we also have to import the abstract NFT.sol smart contract which we've created in the last video, like so. Now we can scroll back to our buy from sales order function. And here we can take the following actions now, depending on if the token is minted yet or not. If the NFT token was not minted yet, then we mint it with the data provided in the sales order. On the other hand, if the token is minted yet, then we make another check here. Since even with valid sales order, the token meanwhile could be sold on another marketplace. Once the token is minted, we invalidate the sales order with the function invalidate sales order. We implement the function invalidate sales order as follows. First, we perform some checks here again. And here we invalidate the sales order hash in the invalidated sales order mapping in order to prevent that the sales order can be used again. The invalidated sales order mapping is defined like so in the smart contract. And we also implement the sales order nodes here. And here at the end of the function, we now can safely transfer the NFT token from the token owner to the buyer. Now we switch back to our interface marketplace.js module. And here we can implement the buy from sales order function as follows. This buy from sales order function in the interface marketplace.js module is basically a wrapper function for the buy from sales order function in our marketplace smart contract. And now we can switch to our nfts.gs frontend component, which we've created in the second episode. And here we call the interface marketplace buy from sales order function whenever the user wants to buy an NFT from a lazy minted sales order. In order to purchase this NFT from the lazy minted sales order, we switch to a different account now in MetaMask. Now we can click on the Buy AIP 712 button in our frontend. This opens the MetaMask browser with the price from the sales order as message value. And here we confirm the price and the gas fees. This purchase finally links this NFT token to the blockchain and it transfers it to our account. So that's all for today. Please click the subscribe button and the notification bell below so that you can keep up to date with all of our videos. And thank you for watching.